Okay, today we are going to talk about the immune system. So you're going to watch this video that I am making for you and you're going to use your guided notes packet for the immune system to fill in those notes as you watch the video. Um, this will be similar to the lecture that I do in class and what you fill along as I teach in class, but instead you're going to fill in the notes as we go along through the video. And at the end of the video, you will answer the discussion questions at the end of the packet, as well as take the quiz on Schoology over the immune system. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first of all, let's talk about why the immune system is important. It is important because it protects our body from pathogens, which are bacteria and viruses, and help us to fight off these infections to keep us well. We have lots of different organs in our body that are a part of the immune system. Some of these would be our tonsils and the adenoids. We have lymph nodes, lymphatic vessels, thymus, lymph nodes, our spleen, the appendix can help, our bone marrow, and you can see we have more lymph, lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels throughout our body. So these are the organs that are going to be primarily important in helping our immune system to work and function properly. When it comes to the immune system, we're going to see there are two different types of responses. The first type of response is a what we call a non-specific response. So a non-specific response here is one that does not have any specific target. Okay, it's just going to be a blanket response, and this is part of our innate immunity. Innate immunity means you are born with it. So when you are Whatever you are born with is going to be a part of your innate immunity. Our, nine, our non specific defenses of our immune system are a part of our first line of defense. This is the first thing that's going to protect your body from bacteria and viruses in order um, before anything else. So, the first part of this is important is our skin. Our skin it covers our body and protects us, protects us from getting um, viruses and bacteria into our body. Um, we do this by secreting oils onto our skin and sweat. Remember, we talked about how sweat creates an acidic environment, which is going to be unfavorable to pathogens such as bacteria. And we talked about this when we talked about bacteria and when we talked about also the excretory system and how sweating um, can change the environment on your skin. So skin is a huge part of your nonspecific respons responses, which are part of your innate immune system, meaning you are born with it. Everyone is born with skin, and skin is a huge part of protecting our body from getting infections. Another part of the nonspecific immune system is mucus. Everyone is born with mucus. Mucus um, is, we can, um, if you've ever had a cold and you've coughed it up, it's that kind of phlegm, gross stuff in your throat and your lungs. Um, this works because the particles become trapped in the mucus and then you're, they're going to be moved upward out of the cilia. Remember, cilia are going to be these little things on either side of your throat which are going to help to move the mucus back up and out of your body. So when you cough or sneeze, this is going to get rid of the mucus that has the bacteria or the viruses in it so that it's no longer inside your body to help harm your body. And also, sometimes we swallow mucus. And when we swallow mucus, this gets sent to our stomach. And there are enzymes in our stomach which are going to break down, enzymes break down things, which are going to break down the bacteria as well as the acidic environment is going to kill the bacteria and other pathogens. So it's through both of these ways that mucus helps us to get rid of pathogens that could potentially harm our bodies. A third part of the nonspecific immune system are tears. We all have tears, and tears contain a very special enzyme called lysozyme. And lysozyme can break down bacteria. Okay, they break down bacteria. So if you are to get bacteria or something in your eyes, it's going to be your lysozymes that are going to attack it and kill it. Remember, this is very similar to the word lysosome, which is an organelle inside of our cells. And we know that lysosomes are the trash, right? The garbage disposal. So it takes the things the cell no longer needs and breaks them down. 
or the things that are harmful, right? Same thing with a lysosome, a lysozyme. Lysozymes take in harmful things and break them down, just like a lysosome does for the cell. Our second line of defense is going to include our white blood cells. Our white blood cells are going to initiate an immune response whenever a toxin path or pathogen has entered into the body. So if you think about if you've ever had an ant bite, it can be very painful. This is because when the skin is broken, the toxin from the ant bite is going to enter into the bloodstream. And this causes the skin around the bite to become red, itchy, swollen, painful, itchy, and hot. Okay, itchy twice because we know it's super, super uncomfortable. So what has happened is our white blood cells have traveled to this infected tissue and released a chemical signal that's going to cause our immune system to start making more white blood cells that's going to come up here and fight off the toxin. So our white blood cells cause an immune response by first recognizing that there's a problem and then causing more white blood cells to be made in order to help battle and fight off the infection so it does not harm our body or become further infected. Now, some white blood cells engulf pathogens through the process of endocytosis, which we talked about, and more specifically, we know this to be phagocytosis. And we watched a video over this in class. If you remember, we watched the white blood cell chasing the bacteria all around through the different red blood cells in order to chase it down and engulf it. So it's specifically phagocytosis, which we know is a type of endocytosis. Now, sometimes when we're sick, we get a fever. A fever is caused when white blood cells release a chemical that's going to tell our hypothalamus, remember, which is part of our brain, that it needs to raise the body temperature. Now, this has two things. Not only does it help make the environment more unfavorable for the invader, but it also increases the rate at which white blood cells can mature. So when we heat up our body temperature or when you have a fever, your white blood cells are going to mature quicker so we get more of them faster to help fight off the infection. And also, this environment's no longer going to be favorable for the pathogen or invader that's inside of our body. So it works in two different ways. Now we're going to talk about specific immunity. Specific immunity is a part of acquired immunity, meaning this is not something you are born with. It. So you are not born with acquired immunity. You have to acquire it over your lifetime by being exposed to different viruses and bacteria. Okay, the third line of defense is going to be cellular immunity. And cellular immunity is going to depend on cells we call helper T cells. All right, helper T cells are going to be important in helping our body to remember infections that it has encountered. So what happens is, as white blood cells engulf the pathogen through phagocytosis, they're going to display protein markers on the surface of the white blood cell so that our T cells can recognize these protein markers and then start making more of these. So as more T lymphocytes or T cells bind these white blood cells, it's going to tell us to make more T cells. That way, our T cells will then be able to recognize the pathogen that's, going, that, that's in our body and tell our body to attack it with antibodies and um, fight it off. So this right here, our T cells are going to help us to mark and target pathogens in our body. So that's very important. Okay, we have two types of T cells. The first type are helper T cells. Helper T cells are going to stimulate killer T cells and tell, killer, tell the um, killer T cells to become activated. And these are also going to create memory cells, which we'll talk about in just a second, which will help our body to remember infections so that if we encounter the same bacteria or virus in the future, our body already has a response prepared to fight it. Okay, let's talk for a second about killer T cells. Killer T cells are going to travel to the infected site and attach to the infected cell. Then it's going to release enzymes to destroy it, okay? This is also going to help make memory cells. So the killer T cells are the T cells that are actually going to go find the, the bad cell and kill it and destroy it so it prevents it from hurting any more cells. Now, I also want to point out something else over right here. 
Helper T cells are the ones that HIV targets. So HIV targets helper T cells and destroys them. And so when HIV destroys helper T cells, this pre prevents us from um, stimulating the killer T cells to do their job, um, which can cause a lot of problems in our immune system. Okay, now antibody immunity is dependent on something we call B cells. And B cells are our memory cells. This is what helps us to remember, our body to remember, infections that it's encountered. So, for instance, if you have ever gotten a flu shot, a flu shot contains some of some um, dead flu virus, okay, which still has enough virus proteins in it for your body to issue an immune response. So what happens when you get a flu shot is it's going to um, issue an immune response and create memory, okay? So it's going to create these B cells. And these B cells then are going to remember this, the flu virus in order to, so that if it encounters it again, it's going to tell your body to kill it and attack it and get rid of it. So your B cells are very important in helping us to be able to um, build up immunity throughout our lives so that we do not get sick every time we encounter the same thing. This is very, very important in helping us to adapt and live better in our environment. So B cells work to remember, they're going to remember the antigen, which is like a protein mark on the virus, and produce antibodies. Remember, antibodies are the little Y-shaped things that are going to target the virus and get rid of it. So B cells are able to remember the antigen, and then they also are able to recognize the antigen. And so if it sees it again, it's going to automatically tell our body to make more antibodies. And these antibodies will target and kill off the pathogen. So the antigen is going to be anything such as bacteria, viruses, or other foreign cells. And the antibody we know is a protein that's carried in the bloodstream that's going to bind to the antigen. Antigen Antibodies are Y-shaped and bind to an antigen like the lock and key model. And these are going to be specific to each invader. So each time a new disease is contracted, new antibodies are going to be made. So for instance, if we have here, if this is our um, flu virus, our anti, it's, and our antibody is going to attack it and tell our cell, our killer T cell, to kill it, okay, once it binds to it and it recognizes it as a pathogen. I already mentioned this on a previous slide, but HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, attacks helper T cells, which in, inhibits the immune system from making an adequate response leaving our bodies unable to de defend themselves. This is what leads to the development of AIDS. And AIDS is the autoimmune deficiency syndrome, meaning that your body is no longer to able to effectively fight off attacks by viruses and bacteria in your body. We already mentioned briefly a little bit about vaccines when I mentioned the flu vaccine earlier. Um, vaccines are able to artificially produce acquired immunity, meaning that we can go ahead and produce, um, create B cells and memory cells um, in order to help us to remember these um, pathogens so that whenever we encounter them again, our body is able to produce antibodies at a faster rate and fight off the infection. So again, this uh, vaccines cause our body to, our immune system to produce uh, memory cells of B and T lymphocytes, it's B and T cells, so that um, we can fight off the antigen if it comes into contact with it at a fast rate. This keeps us from um, being sick for a long time with a cold or a flu, because if our body has seen that same virus before, we're able to get rid of it faster. Okay, this concludes our my video lecture over the immune system. Go back through, make sure you have every blank filled in on your guided notes packet. And now I want you to answer the discussion questions at the end of the notes and make sure you take the immune system quiz on Schoology by the posted deadline. I will see you in class. Have a great evening.